Welcome to Believer's Channel 2. I'm Pastor Russ. Today I'm going to have a guest, uh, Pastor Ken Lane. Uh, he's from the foothills and mountains of New York State. Beautiful area. And we're going to be at his home on the front porch, uh, putting together a message and a video special for you. So stick with us. Right now I'd like to tell you that there's a thumbs up at the bottom. Very important that you hit that. And also the subscribe subscribe button, which is at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. That is so important. It opens up doors all over the world for people to hear the word of God. So the more subscribers we have, the more doors that are open. So please be a part of that. It's free. It doesn't cost you a penny. So help us out in that area. And God will bless you. I guarantee it. So let's get to today's message. Pastor Ken Lane. Hallelujah. You know, we've got to come to a point where we really speak from our hearts and not from our brain. That we put you first in all things. And there was a time when I was just a young Christian. I was working as a photographer for Dayton T. Brown in, court, in uh, Long Island. And my boss was a son of Episcopalian priest. And I thought, wow, this is, this is going to be good. So I tried to get to know him. And boy, he, he was so ungodly at times. I couldn't believe that, that he was a son of Episcopalian priest. Anyway, I put that behind me. And I just kind of, he made life as miserable as he could possibly make for me. And I thought, man, I'm going to get fired one of these days because he, he was my boss. And one day I went to work and he said, you know, George was fired today. And boy, did I get happy. I thought, man, I don't have to deal with this dude anymore. I'm just going to believe that, that you're going to work things out. And I couldn't wait to get home to tell my wife the good news, which was uh, different than what I had thought. When I went home, I said, honey, you know, I don't have to face that George anymore and listen to his cussing and and just make a life miserable for me and, and call me all kinds of names. He was gonna cut out a, a, a hole in my darkroom door so I could give, give uh, uh, what, what did they do? Uh, give repentance to people and, and just made me feel many, many times unworthy of what, what I was looking to be. But you know, the main point of this whole story is George, was I when, when I finally got up the nerve to call him at home, he was about to commit suicide. And I didn't know that. And I heard this weird music. I thought, oh my God, do I have to really deal with this? I, and so, so I, 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 I had faith. I knew my wife was home praying for me. I said, George, you got to change your way of living. And all of a sudden, everything went quiet. And George got on the phone, he says, you know, Ken, I was going to take my life. I had a, a pistol and I was going to shoot my head off. I was so, so depressed. And I, I thank God that you called. And, I, and, and as much as I didn't want to, and I have to be honest, I didn't want to face him anymore. I thought I was finished with him. And I thought to myself, I, I, if I'm going to go to Bible school and think I'm going to do the Lord's work, I better do it. So I, I went. I made an appointment to see him that night and we, we must have sat down for about three hours and just talked and, and I, I invited him to my church and, and I thought, my God, this man was going to take his life. And then I changed my whole attitude. I went home to my wife thinking she would, she says, you know, you should have knew, known that if, you're, if you believe you're a Christian. So George, I know if you hear this, I would just love to talk with you about it and and may, maybe have a chance to witness about it. I, I hope I haven't hurt anybody's feelings by doing this and I, I put it in God's place. I went on to become a ordained minister and I'm almost 80 years old now. And that was way back when I was just a young buck. And I, I know that I know that the Lord listens to us when we really pray from our hearts and He, we, he puts people in our lives that can, we can change our direction. So I, I give all the glory to God. I praise God for being part of his kingdom. And I, I, 
I'm, I'm, I'm praying for George right now. I hope somehow he hears this and he gets in touch with me and that we can just reminisce of the good things God has done for the both of us. And I pray for him every time I, I, I think about it. And I thought about it today. So I'm saying what I'm from my heart. I, I'm glad, George, that you're still alive and that you didn't commit suicide. And I believe you're one very fine Episcopalian priest. And I give God all the glory for all. For we, we serve an awesome God. I like to pray, Father God, if it's possible, let George somehow find out about this tape and that him and I can get together and just rejoice in Christ. For you're an awesome God and you know our hearts and you know his heart. So bless this prayer. I believe in prayer. I believe you do hear and answer prayer. So I pray this in Jesus' precious name and to all the glory be to him. Amen.